Okay, welcome to the inaugural Meta Pundit screencast. Um, I'm kind of just doing this to get a feel uh, for making screencasts. I'm using VNC to Swift, a Python program, to record my screencast. Uh, I'm using Audacity to record the audio, and uh, I'll splice them together here at the end. Um, but while I've got you watching my first screencast, I might as well do something useful. So I thought I'd show you um, a Firefox configuration tip that I found useful. It's kind of hard to describe. So I've got here a um, stock, a new user account created on Ubuntu. I've got Firefox 2 open, uh, open for the very first time. And you'll notice it's got these icons uh, here. And these are actually bookmarks. In the bookmarks menu, there's a folder called bookmarks toolbar folder, and it's got those same two icons in it. And that's a really convenient feature, um, having things right there on the toolbar. The only negative is it takes up a little bit of screen real estate. So Firefox is infinitely configurable. Let's fix that. What you do for that is uh, go up to the View menu and Toolbars and click on Customize. When I click on Customize, it's pulling up a dialog box that's filling my whole screen in this uh, 640 480 window I have that I'm recording. So I'm going to move that down. And then I'm going to click on the Bookmarks Toolbar Items and drag up beside my menu. Okay? And let go. And once I've made that change, can I click Done? And the bookmarks that I had down here are now up here. So I still haven't gained any screen real estate, but this is all blank space. So can I get rid of that? Well, interestingly, if you go to View and Toolbars um, and uncheck the Bookmarks Toolbar folder to hide it, that horizontal uh, space goes away, blank space goes away, but I've still got my Bookmarks Toolbar icons up here. The other ones here is just hidden because it's a little too wide to be seen. So that's useful. I've got a little more vertical real estate. But in this small window, I only have space for a single um, bookmark. Well, there's a fix for that, too. Let's go ahead and delete the stock ones that came. I'm not going to use the Getting Started link or the live uh, live bookmarks. It's loading the RSS from, from uh, latest headlines, wherever that is. Delete that. Um, I find lately, I do most of my browsing through RSS. My actual bookmarks are handled by Delicious. Um, so I just have a few sites that I go to on an extremely regular basis, right? I'm clicking on them every hour or something. So Gmail, for instance. I go and check my mail. This might be a site that I'd like to bookmark. So I'm going to bookmark this and put it in my bookmarks toolbar folder. So bookmark this page. Create in bookmarks toolbar folder. And click add. Okay, so it's up there. If I click on it once, it reloads, and it actually puts an icon beside it. And what it's putting is the fav icon, which is the icon you see here in the address bar. Sites can define a little file, favicon.ico. There's a couple ways to define it, but basically just a really small file um, that kind of has your logo, something distinctive about you, and lots of sites now have this. Well, if I have that fav icon on this bookmark, do I really need all that text? And no. I'll go to Properties and delete the name and click OK. And now what I really have is just a button. And I could have um, several of those buttons. Uh, I mentioned RSS. I go to blog lines um, for my online RSS feeder, feed reader. Um, and it has a fave icon. So I'm going to bookmark this page in my bookmarks toolbar folder. And I'll just go ahead and delete the text while I'm here and add it. And I get a generic icon. But if I click on it once, so it reloads, it gets the fave icon as well. Um, and let me just put several icons up there, just so you can see what that looks like. Um, decentfilms.com is a, a website. I, I uh, wrote the back end uh, for Stephen Gradanis. It's an interesting film review site. If you're a, a Christian or if you're a film buff, he writes from a perspective of faith. But uh, so a good reviewer and writes about some eclectic and interesting mu movies. Um, he's got a fave icon. So I'm going to bookmark this page, put it in the toolbar folder, delete the text, and add. And again, I've got the generic icon, but once I've clicked on it once, um, I find if you don't click on these icons for a while, you lose the fave icon. Um, I think it's cached, and it must be cached for a certain amount of time. But if you're not clicking on them for a while, it sort of defeats the whole purpose. So this is really for icons that I'm going to click on all the time. Um, and like I said, I mostly, like, I wouldn't have decent films up here. I read uh, when he reviews a film that shows up in my RSS feeds. 
um, but just for an example, there is a Firefox extension. Um, it's called Fave Icon Picker that will allow you to put a logo of your own choice um, overwriting a fave icon or if you have a site that you want to um, bookmark in this way I have a Basecamp site Basecamp doesn't allow you to have a custom doesn't allow you to put a fave icon up hint hint 37 signals uploading a fave icon would be a great feature um, so I use the Firefox extension uh, to go ahead and put the the little button there with a logo of my choice um, but I won't demonstrate the extension. You can hunt that down on your own if you're so interested. I do have one other little tweak um, that I'd like. Firefox 2 is great. The only thing I really don't like about Firefox 2 is the individual close buttons on the tabs. Uh, if you have several tabs open here, let's open several, and you want to close several tabs, this tab has a close button on it, that tab has a close button on it, oh, and now I have to move over to close that tab. Very inconvenient, and uh, you know, if you are familiar with Fitz Law, I would say that that close button that's here on the side it has a very large target area, and not having to move to perform multiple actions is also valuable. So you can get back to, um, I said Firefox was infinitely configurable, you can get back to the standard behavior, um, not through an obscure menu in this case, but by going to About Config. And about config shows you all the configuration variables for Firefox. You're probably familiar with it. Let's type tabs here to filter down my list. And what I'm looking for is um, uh, tab close buttons. There we go. And it has a value of 1, an integer. Not very helpful, but a little research reveals. Putting a 3 there reverts to Firefox 1.5 behavior. So hey, I've got a single close button there before I use it. And we'll make one other change. I like my tabs a little narrower. They're forced to be at least 100 pixels wide right now. Um, which one of these is that? Tab minimum width, 100 pixels. Let's drop that down to 60 pixels, for instance. Nothing changed, but if I open more tabs, it lets them get a little bit narrower instead of having that scroll uh, drop down here. As soon, and there's a Firefox extension that actually lets you just have fav icons on your tabs and does away with the text if a fav icon does exist, which is nice. Um, I could sit and configure Firefox all day. You undoubtedly have a ton of your own tweaks, but I hope just the little one um, moving those bookmark icons up here and doing away with the text was useful to you. Uh, I have, like I said, the things I click on uh, the JavaScript shell up there in my browser, uh, and it really instead of having to navigate through a menu, maybe even to a subfolder. Um, it's like having multiple home buttons, just right there, conveniently easy to click on. So that's it for the uh, the first MetaPundit screencast. I hope that was useful to you, and I hope you enjoyed it.